much. Yeah, so I'm driving down the highway and a cop pulls me over. He said, do you know how fast you were going? I said, yeah, 930 miles an hour. The cop looked at me funny and said, no, I clocked you at 70. And the speed limit is 55. You were speeding. License and registration, please. So I hand it over. He starts writing out the ticket. Then he says, by the way, how'd you come up with 930 miles an hour? So I told him. I said, the earth spins east at 1,000 miles an hour, right? He said, yeah, so? I said, I'm headed west, going 70 miles an hour. So 1,000 miles an hour minus 70 miles an hour is 930 miles an hour. The cop looks at me and says, sir, please step out of the vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, so I took a flight recently, and you know when the pressure builds in your ears? It can be brutal. You pinch your nose and blow, but sometimes it doesn't work, right? I was a wreck at only six miles up. I was pinching and blowing, trying to unclog my ears. Then I thought about the poor astronauts on the ISS and how hard they must have to blow at 254 miles up. None of the scientists, astronomers, astrophysicists, <laughs> popular media reporting on these things. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's brought this up. Yeah, so the astronauts on the ISS are pretty busy. They're always running experiments, spacewalking, exercising. Every minute up there is planned out. Except when they're binge-watching Netflix. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, they got a 65 inch flat panel TV and tons of munchies. They're set. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. If you're in the market for a new rover, well, there are plenty to choose from. You could try the NASA model, lots of bells and whistles. You could try a Chinese model, but you'll just hunger for more. Heck, you can even try one from India. But if you're looking for true performance in your new rover, there's only one choice. The new Audi Quattro Luna Rover. German engineering at its best. Does the quarter Mars mile and two moons flat. Contact your local lunar Audi dealer today. If you need a better car, Pussy Cow, he's the greatest one by far, Pussy Cow. Give a car to your wife, she will love you all your life, Pussy Cow, Pussy Cow, Pussy Cow. Yeah, so I woke up in the middle of the night, worried about the ISS. All that space junk floating around up there, it's dangerous. They've been lucky so far, only a couple of minor dings. But the space station before it wasn't so lucky. <laughs> yeah, Skylab. It was launched way back in 1973. It worked for a while, but then disaster struck. <laughs> Get a load of this. <laughs> ah, something went right through the roof. Looks like they used a good tarp to try and stop the leak, but it ended up sinking. <laughs> it's dangerous around here, all the space junk. They ought to just take all the space junk, and why not round up all the plastic we can't recycle, and dump it into the black hole? <laughs> yeah, two birds, one stone. We could really clean up the place. And if someone complains on the other end of this thing, that's three big birds, one stone. Yeah, so the 60s. It was an amazing decade. I watched a documentary on Woodstock, and in one scene, they were showing all the walls of reels, tapes, and recordings. Then I realized something. They managed to save all the Woodstock music tapes, but lost all the moon landing telemetry tapes? No way. Makes me wonder, 
what kind of drugs NASA was on. Yeah, so the 60s had lots of great space programs. I find new ones every day. Did you guys know about the Mariners? They were getting busy. <laughs> yeah, there were 10 of them. This is Mariner 1. It sank on the way up, but the rest did pretty good. Here's Mariner 2. It did Venus in 1962 and took off. Here's Mariner 3. It did Mars in 63. Mariner 4. It did Mars in 64. Mariner 5. It did Venus in 67. Mariner 6 and Mariner 7. Both did Mars at the same time. Well, it was the 60s trying to do what no one else has ever done before in this culture. Yeah, here's Mariner 8. This poor guy struck out. Mariner 9. He did Mars in 71. Mariner 10. This guy was the luckiest. Yeah, I know he's not very good looking, but he's famous. He was the first to do the interplanetary gravitational slingshot maneuver. He used Venus to bend his flight path. That got his perihelion up, and he did Mercury three times. <laughs> and then NASA shared those pictures of the world. <laughs> yeah, so Space IL tried to land on the moon, but it didn't go so well. Yeah, it almost made it, but at the last second it crashed. Yeah, the bear sheet lander. Hey, does a bear sheet on the moon? No? Well, these ones do. Get a load of this. <laughs> I know it looks crazy, but it's real. Yeah, it's pretty creepy looking. Back in April, when bear sheet crashed on the moon, it spilled out thousands of these water bears. And these things can survive in any environment, even space. Just imagine these things doing their business all over the moon. Who's going to clean that up? The NASA scientists. Yeah, so NASA has sure given us some award-winning performances over the years. And they finally got credit. <laughs> yeah, they won an Emmy. This one's for Cassini. They also had two other nominations. <laughs> this guy down here is losing his mind. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Remember this? Yeah, frankly, I think these guys should have won the Emmy. I didn't watch any of the Cassini episodes, but I watched these guys over and over and over again. Yeah, so... The BBC reported NASA has started an investigation into the first crime committed in space. <laughs> yeah, that's Anne McLean getting busted. Yeah, she denies everything, but she got popped for hacking into her girlfriend's bank account from the ISS. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. So stupid. Everybody knows the address of the ISS. She should have at least used a VPN. Is that actually what happened? And is that actually possible in any way? No. Yeah, so my wife thinks I need to get out more. But with all the chemtrails, forget it. Here in Nevada, the chemtrails are so thick you can ski on them. <laughs> get a load of this. I've got access right out my back door, and the weather here is so nice you can chemtrail ski in shorts. Look at these perfectly groomed chemtrails. Nice looking moguls. But that's not for me. So I showed all this to my wife, 
She said, I'm really starting to worry about you. We're going to take a vacation or I'm calling the doctor. I said, all right, all right. We'll take a vacation. Where do you want to go? She said, I've always wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. I said, fine. But you know I'm afraid of helicopters, little planes, and boats. I get seasick. And then she said, no, you don't have to do any of that. You can see the Statue of Liberty from the harbor. I said, no, nah, no point, not if the earth is a ball. <laughs> and she starts to roll her eyes. And I said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So I said, look, just Google, how far away can you see the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> so she opens up the laptop and starts typing. Then all of a sudden she looks a little scared and she's starting to freak out a little bit. So I said, what's wrong? What does it say? I said, yeah, see? My wife looks at me and says, how'd you do that? I said, do what? She said, how did you hack into Google? <laughs> I said, now that sounds crazy. I'm calling a doctor. She jumped up and she hollered and I said to her, it's all right. You know, it's just a Brussels sprouts. Yeah, so Apollo 11 has been fodder for conspiracy theorists ever since the day the LEM touched down on the lunar surface. Now they say Neil Armstrong's boots don't match the footprints. Yeah, okay, but there was a dozen other guys who walked around on the moon after him. Maybe it's one of their footprints. I'm going to prove it to you once again with basic kindergarten level science. Woof. <laughs> Yeah, 
so NASA is headed back to Mars in 2020 <laughs> with a new rover. But this time they have a new and amazing way to land it. They're not going to bubble wrap it and crash land it like before. Too risky. <laughs> yeah. That's a sky crane. That's the rover. This is called a sky crane maneuver. Yeah, it will use wires to lower the rover safely down to the Martian surface. <laughs> Hope it doesn't fall <laughs> from the ceiling. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, but this rover is going to take a lot of great pictures. It has 23 cameras on it. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> See? It's got cameras all over it. It has front and rear has cams, mast cams, nav cams, super cams, and seven science cameras. I didn't even know they made science cameras. Yeah, it can take a picture of something and tell you what it's made of. But what's really cool, the rover will deploy a small drone. <laughs> yeah. This is called the Mars Helicopter Scout. It will fly around, take pictures, do some mapping. <laughs> yeah, I know it doesn't look like a very good one. I've seen better ones at the mall. Yeah, so I was thinking about visiting some relatives out of town, but they don't have internet, no cell service, nothing. Well, then I thought, I'll just wait for Starlink. <laughs> Get a load of this. Yeah, soon there will be internet everywhere. Some of you have probably seen this. <laughs> yeah, the Starlink satellite train. There will be 25,000 of these things all over the sky. And everything eventually will look like this. <laughs> yeah, just imagine. No need for 5G and all those worries. Heck, they'll be able to take down all those ugly wires hanging everywhere. That'd be great. Cell towers, we don't need those anymore. Take those down. Undersea cables, we don't need those. Pull those up. We could really clean up the place. As the company claims, they'll burn up as they return to Earth's atmosphere. All right, you guys have been great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>